Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Have you been looking at the check? So it says down here, uh, down payment on dream home. And that is the subject matter today. Uh, to, for those who have that dream in our neighborhood, maybe we can help you with a dream home. Uh, so uh, I'm very happy to have your attendance here. I think this is a very uh, important announcement on the part of the institution to which uh, you all belong and uh, do fantastic work for. Uh, some of you may know that uh, we've had a Live Near Your Work program uh, on campus for several years. So it's fair to ask the question, so what's so new about this? Uh, we knew a long time ago uh, that we needed to be intentional about getting more of our employees here at UMB living in the neighborhoods around campus so that we could actively, deliberately, purposefully blur the line between university and community, between neighbor and employee. Now, those of you who have been around for a while know that I've been saying this for a while, maybe not in those particular words, but uh, I have often said that this is not a discussion when we talk about how we engage with the community, about the community on the other side of that big boulevard. I strongly believe that it's one community. It's not us taking steps to work with the community. It's our community. And I want that line, I want that distinction blurred, deliberately blurred, uh, so that, uh, and I know these can sound like trite words, uh, so that we share a common destiny. If we can blur the line and feel ourselves and be accepted as part of the community, yeah, I hope it will be good for the community. That's part of our responsibility as an institution. But I don't mind saying I also expect that it'll be good for us. If we have a strong community in which this institution sits, then this institution's future is more secure. We will feel rightfully more secure about the idea that the great employees that we have, that we're able to attract here, the staff, the faculty, the great students we're able to attract here, they will, in the future, say, yeah, that's a great place to be. So it's the old, we're all in this together. So I said we had a Live Near Your Work program uh, designed to get more employees into the neighborhoods we serve and that we're a part of. But here's the bad news. Virtually nobody participated in the program. It didn't work. Uh, we made a number of changes to the program. Uh, we uh, uh, tried to tweak it a bit and it didn't work. Uh, and my colleague, our Vice President for uh, Finance and Business, uh, Dawn Rhodes, whom you know and whose baby this is, will tell you about how we've tweaked it, but still without a major impact. Because clearly, there was one big improvement uh, we knew we needed to make came down to money. Uh, we needed to offer employees more money toward 
their down payment, and their closing costs. In the beginning, uh, we had been offering a $2,500 incentive, which was matched by a $2,500 grant from the city. So what we could offer an employee who wanted to live near her work or his work was $5,000 toward the purchase. Now, you've seen in the paper already, and we announced publicly on Tuesday, and we're here to share the details with you, that uh, we've dramatically increased that number. So now our UMB employees are eligible not for $2,500 from UMB, but $16,000 from UMB, along with the state's $2,500 matching grant. So that's a total incentive not a $5,000, but of $18,500. And yes, we expect that to change the game. Uh, I hope that that will persuade more employees to look at Southwest Baltimore when they're buying a home. Uh, I hope it'll help many of our employees who are first-time home buyers. Uh, I hope it'll help us when we tell prospective employees about this program, that it'll tip them toward us, toward wanting to work here. Uh, and we hope it'll make a difference to the community so that the community is a vibrant, shared community where there are multiple stakeholders in the strength of the community, in the safety of the community, uh, in the future of the community, uh, in the amenities in the community. Uh, yeah, I mean, my dream would be to see many of you walking to and from work in the years ahead. Maybe see you out at local restaurants and in local shops uh, that might bubble up. Uh, so those are my thoughts, my remarks. Let's get into the meat of it. Uh, I'm going to ask our Chief Business and Finance Officer, Don Rhodes, uh, to talk about this in some detail. And as I said, this is her baby, and we should all appreciate her for it. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, and Happy New Year's. We want to thank everybody who took time to come out today and to learn about our new and improved Live Near Your Work program. When you leave here, tell all of the colleagues that you work with about this program. And while you may not have the details locked down, you'll have a website that you can send them to. I'd like to first recognize our panelists in the front of the room. They're going to be here to answer questions for you. And I'm going to ask them to stand so that people will know specifically who I'm talking about. Matthew Gregory is from Golden Northwest Housing and Resource Center. And you'll learn a little bit more shortly about what Matthew will do for us in the future. Liz Koontz from Live Baltimore. They have a wealth of information that you all will benefit from. Our own Emily Cordich. She is the UMB Live Near Your Work Coordinator. You will be in contact with her a lot as you go down this path. We have Michael Seip, our Southwest Partnership partner. And I'll tell you more about what Michael does, but he's going to make sure that we have homes to buy, and he's already advised us in tremendous ways that I'll tell you a little bit more about. And then at the end, we have Bill Warner. He is a resident of one of the neighborhoods that is part of our target zone, and he's also a UMB employee in the Office of Community Engagement. a brief introduction of our improved program, I will ask each of our panelists to say a few words, and at the end, we'll open it up to the floor for questions from any of you. And I'm going to ask somebody to see if they can get this lavalier to work so I don't have to hold this thing in my hand. <laughs> Thank you. Our mission for this project, we at UMB we are an anchor institution, and it was important for us to revitalize the community just across MLK, of which we are a part of. So community revitalization is a key part 
of what's driving this program. But just as importantly, we wanted to provide home ownership for you, our family members, our employees. So while showing our commitment to our community, we are pro providing you, our employees, with an outstanding opportunity that benefits both our neighborhoods and you. Can I switch? Testing, one, two, three. You have to go closer to your... Can you hear me? As Dr. Perman has already mentioned, all eligible employees can receive $18,500 toward down payment and closing costs. I think that deserves a woo-woo. <laughs> okay. $16,000 will come from UMB, 2500 from the Baltimore City for our grand total. In addition to UMB's incentives, these grants can be stacked with other incentives. So, for example, if you were to purchase a home that at some point had been on the vacant roll, that would qualify you for the vacant to value program. And if you meet all the eligibility, that would add $2,000 to the $18,500 that you would be getting from the UMB Live Near Your Work program. There's other programs, House Keys for Employees, the Live Baltimore program that is organized and coordinated through uh, Live through Live Baltimore. <laughs> and there's potentially several others. But we want you to know that it doesn't just stop at our 185. And that's why we'll have partners working with you to try to optimize the incentives that are out there that you can qualify for. Our targeted neighborhoods are Franklin Square, Poppleton, Union Square, Holland's Market, Mount Clare, Washington Village or Pigtown, and Berry Circle. The incentives can only be applied to these neighborhoods. So as you engage with realtors, if you're truly interested in earning this incentive, you have to make sure that the realtor keeps you in these neighborhoods. Program eligibility is available to a full-time employee and to a part-time employee who's at least a 50% FTE, who is in good standing at the time of the application, and we mean in good standing from an employment standpoint. And you also will have had to complete your home ownership counseling and receive your certificate. Employees have to be able to be deemed credit worthy to qualify for a mortgage. So, as you're sitting here and if you're thinking, oh, my credit's not in good shape, I'm not going to be able to do this, that's not true. We offer services to the HR department that help with credit rebuilding. Go Northwest will help with credit rebuilding. So it may be a longer process, but that does not mean that your dream will be denied you will still have an opportunity once credit is repaired to be able to apply for the program. An employee must contribute at least $1,000 toward the down payment. It's important to see that you all have skin in the game too. We're gonna put up 18.5, you may be eligible for other incentives, but if this is really important to you, you need to at least show that you have some skin in the game. The Live Near Your Work funds are taxable. They're a taxable employee benefit and requires an employee to maintain the residence as their primary residence for five years. So each year, the, the 16000 that the University of Maryland gives to you through this program, 3200 which is a fifth of it, will be taxable income to you in that year. So during the course of the year, we would take enough taxes out to cover the 3,200. We're required by IRS, but um, it's still a benefit. Even after you take the tax out, this is a net gain to all employees. It's the tax on 3,200. Right, right, it's the tax on the 32. Did I say it wrong? No, you did, but you Okay, it could have been confused, yes. We want to make it clear. Whatever your tax bracket is, Right. Your tax on and again, because we've said community revitalization, that also includes stabilization, 
The five-year residency requirement is there. Should you choose to move and that not be your primary resident, that's not necessarily fulfilling our mission, and there would be a requirement for you to pay a certain portion of what we gave you back. We don't want any house flippers. <laughs> <laughs> we are also, as Dr. Carmen said, extending this to newly hired employees, and we hope that this would be a recruiting tool to them. However, only one Live Near Your Work grant will be provided per household or address. So for multiple employee households, only one grant will be issued for any home purchase. As I mentioned earlier, the funds can only be used in the targeted neighborhoods. Now a little bit more about the program parameters. Live Near Your Work funds, as I said, can be stacked with other home buying incentive programs, which will increase the buying power for many employees. Applications to these other incentive programs can be facilitated by Lloyd Baltimore. Raise your hand, Liz. <laughs> One of our partners on the panel today. The disbursement of the UMB Live Near Your Work funds or other incentive programs are contingent on the employee, employee submitting required paperwork in a timely fashion. There definitely has to be ownership from the employee's perspective. For all adults, if you're gonna be buying a home, you have to have responsibility in this process. And so there was conversation between us and the city and they changed their process. We are, we are agreeing with their process and so more responsibility has been put on the employee to make sure that the application is turned in on time and that papers get to the right people. When you say they, sorry to keep interrupting. That's okay. I'm letting you go. Okay. <laughs> they changed their process, meaning it, to the advantage of us folks. Well, they changed. They sped up their process. Well, they, they changed. Check. No, that's not the process that they changed. They changed the process where they were reaching out and getting documents, and it was very cumbersome for them. So now it's going to be the employee's responsibility to make sure that the documents get from here at UMB to the city. But they've also promised to be efficient. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> but this, uh, let's see. It remains the responsibility of the employee to show that all documents are completed accurately and submitted on time. UMB Live Near Your Work Coordinator and HR, Emily Cordish, will assist with the submission of the final application to the city of Baltimore not the compilation of the application content. So all the documents that have to be pulled together, again, that's going to be your responsibility with guidance from several of the people that you see on this panel. We are making the UMB Live Near Your Work funds available on a first come, first serve basis. So we're putting a million five dollars into this program. We have enough funds to assist about 93 families or homeowners in our targeted neighborhoods. This is our pilot program. We wholeheartedly expect it will be successful and that we will be doing this again. So work at your pace. Don't think that the funds will be gone because you haven't done something. Work at your pace that's appropriate for you and what's going on in your life. We're going to be providing you a lot of information. I've already provided you a lot of information. Do not at any point get overwhelmed. We have intentionally created partnerships with the people who can help you and provide you the answer to any question you have. And the only stupid question is the question that goes unasked. This is, this is, it's an it's a intricate process and don't mean to scare you off, but we've got the experts here that can help you get through it. Okay, now a comparison between our old program and our new program. We increased our incentive by $13,500. We intentionally decided to narrow the number of neighborhoods to focus on. By doing so, our investment will lead to a critical mass of new home buyers in a more concentrated area. Unlike many other institutions, UMB Live Do Your Work program allows part-time employees with at least a half FTE to take advantage of the incentive. And we don't prorate it. They're entitled to the same $18,500. Our old program required that the incentive was used toward your first home in Baltimore. This is important. 
Our current program does not require that. So you can own a home someplace else and decide that you want to live and live closer to the University of Maryland Baltimore, you would be eligible for this program. We won't hold it against you that you already own a home. But as I said earlier, your new home in our target area has to be your primary residence. We have a much more extensive list of community partners than you see here. We were able to forge a dialogue with the community to ensure that our program was truly going to be beneficial to you all. And you can find more details about the program at the website. And it is listed at the bottom of every slide. Um, I'm going to suggest you Google Learn your work on our website and you'll get to it. Uh, the website address is www.maryland.edu backslash live hyphen near hyphen your hyphen work backslash. But just Google Live Near Your Work on our website and you'll find it easier. We truly, truly, truly would not be here today if it were not for the collaboration with our community partners, many who are sitting at the table today. And as a result, I would uh, like to just tell you about some of the partnerships that were created during this process that's hopefully going to lead to you having a great home buying experience. The Housing Authority of Baltimore City was able to identify 40 plus of our employees that are Section 8 tenants. They didn't tell us who they were. They can't. That's confidential. But they have reached out and contacted those people to tell them about our program. There are special benefits to those people that make this an even more attractive incentive. So while we don't know who those people are, we truly hope that they will take advantage of this program. We also, the city, um, in the face of Alice Kennedy, Deputy, Deputy Commissioner for the Division of Green, Healthy, and Sustainable Homes, they have agreed to cut the check for us. So they were already cutting their $2,500 city check. Now they're going to cut a check for the full amount and make sure that that gets to the closing table on time. We just wouldn't be able to do it as a university because of our state affiliation and the time it takes to get things done. So we needed to find a partner who could do it in a timely fashion. Southwest Partnership, in the, in the voice of Michael Seip, he has been immensely valuable to us in educating us, in suggesting different things to us, and I think more importantly, in working to make sure that the inventory of new homes will be available. He will go into detail about the awesome opportunities that you'll have in our targeted neighborhoods for purchasing homes. Daybeth Saunders, and I know Daybeth is in the room. Can you stand up, turn around, and look? She is actually the lady who receives your application at the city. She walks it through the process and makes sure that the check gets cut. So it's really her, not Alice, that makes sure that your check gets cut. And this is an example of the partnerships we've been able to create. These people are just as excited as we are internally about this program because we've been working on this together for the last seven months. And then we have Go Northwest, Matthew, Gregory, and Maria Goodman, who is the executive director who is not here today, they're going to offer the home ownership workshops and counseling. And the focus for home ownership counseling is not just how you buy a house, but how you sustain keeping a home and how you have to make sure you have the dollars set aside for repairs and have homeowners insurance, et cetera, et cetera. And those are things that he will bring to the table. In fact, Michael, you will be the person conducting the classes, right? Yes. So you will see his face again if you pursue this. And then we have Lou Baltimore. Oh, I already did you. But Liz and Annie, you have to you have to stand up. Annie is the executive director for Liz Baltimore. They have been a true partner in this. We'll go into um, the trolley tour a little bit later, but again, people that we couldn't have done, we could not have done this without their involvement and their enthusiasm and support. Okay, so now we'll run through how employees should apply for the program. This is a list of things that need to be done. 
What I will tell you is the final step on here cannot move. Some of these other things can be done in different orders. They just have to be done before you come and do the application. We are strongly suggesting that you go through home ownership counseling, and there will be opportunities for you to sign up for that today. It's free to you because your university has made an arrangement with Go Northwest to provide these services. Now, if you want to, at a later time, you can go to any housing counselor, and there's a fee that has to be paid. Um, but for two, two weekends, we've arranged for them to come here and do the counseling session. We suggested that you get this first because your housing certificate lasts for a year. So if you go through that process, you have the opportunity to learn a great deal, and then you have your certificate and you have that work done out of the way. Um, again, I've already talked about the real estate agent and make sure that they don't take you places you don't want to go. I live near your work coordinator is, is Emily, and like I said, she'll be very involved in the process. So I think we've covered, these are the things that you do before the application. Next slide. This is what you have to actually do to officially apply. We're going to start accepting applications on January 29th. And the Live Your Work application can be attained at the URL that I said before, but just Google. Um, it will walk you through getting the application. Emily has to, one, um, I'd make sure that you're looking at a home in our target area. Make sure that you're an employee in good standing. And then she has to sign documents that she will give to you that then ultimately get taken to day Beth. You have to talk to your lender about your incentive program. And then you have to wait to hear back from day Beth that everything's been worked out because there's information that your lender has to send to day Beth in order for her to cut the check. So there's a step-by-step -step process. But what you need to make sure is that you have all of the documents ready to submit to the city. And that's going to be the application. You have to keep a copy of that housing certificate. So once you get it, do not lose it. I know that it can be replaced, but you really don't want to go through that. You need to keep your housing certificate. You need to have proof of your $1,000 employee investment. And at this point, when you're going through this process, you will have already made an offer and had an accepted offer on a home. And it's easy to spend that first $1,000. It could be for the appraisal or some pest inspection. It's, it's easy to accumulate that $1,000. So you would just need the receipts for those things at that time as your proof of your $1,000 investment. And then you would need a copy of the contract of sale. Employees will also want to make sure that the following documents are submitted at least 15 days before settlement. Your signed mortgage loan application, loan estimate, and your final mortgage loan commitment letter. All three things will come from your lender. So it all comes from one place. Again, this is a lot of information to absorb, and we expect there will be many questions about the program. So we were asking employees to submit inquiries about the Live Near Your Work program through the UMB website, whose address is, but it says contact us at the end. I'm not reading that again. <clears throat> Finally, we are dedicated to the long-term impact of this program. We have a number of exciting events that will help you navigate through this process. Today's event is our kickoff. We have our first Go Northwest Home Ownership Counseling Workshop scheduled for January 20th. It is participating in that workshop and then having an individual counseling session that they will set up with you that will allow you to get your certificate. We have the Live Baltimore Trolley Tour. The Trolley Tour is actually going to be held here in the Campus Center. It is actually access to see homes in the north in the south southwest neighborhoods where we're targeting so you'll be able to get on a bus and be able to ride through the neighborhood and actually go in some of the and see some of the homes that are on the market you'll have opportunities to talk with different lenders um, there's just a host of tables and there's also 
short classes that you can participate in. And that also gives you an opportunity to put your name in the drawing to win $5,000 from Little Baltimore. That amount hasn't changed, right? Okay. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. I actually participated in one and got to see parts of Baltimore that I didn't know existed. It's going to be free to you and the employees. Normally there is a charge. So you will have to register with your UMB ID and you will not have a charge. Again, another way that your university is trying to facilitate this and make this as easy and a good experience for you. The applications will open on the 29th and then Go Northwest will have a second workshop. You don't need to go to two, you only need to go to one. But we'll have a second workshop on February 3rd. Starting February 13th, Little Baltimore will be on campus. They will have group sessions. They will have one-on-one -on -one sessions. When we find out those exact dates, we will advertise that information on the website. So that website, you should bookmark. And for those who don't have computer access, we will make sure we're communicating. Emily has ways of communicating for those folks who don't have computer access. And then in March, Michael with Southwest Partners is going to have a housing fair to be able to show you more of the inventory that will be available for purchase. So with that, I would like to open it up for questions. We're going to have our speakers each speak a couple minutes and then have them, you can ask questions. We'll open it up at that time. So Emily, would you like to start? Um, so first, thank you all for coming. I know maybe I've spoken to some of you, so if you've emailed me and want to talk after, feel free. I'll be here to the end of the day. Um, basically, I'm probably the first person you are going to come to. Um, if you get to our website, my email is listed there. My phone number is there, so feel free to reach out. Call me at any time. Um, I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. I know a lot of people have really been reaching out, which is awesome. Um, also, something to think about is that we have the Launch Your Life um, program here. With uh, We have a lot of financial classes that might help you also get you know, some things in order, like the credit Dawn was talking about earlier. Um, so we'll have a lot of upcoming things. Again, that's all on the HR website. So um, the Live Near Your Work is actually very easy to find. If you go to the HR website, there's a, a box. So you just click on that, and it'll take you right there. And um, at the, our website that the communications team did was great. So if you need anything, just feel free to reach out. And if I don't know the answer, then someone on this panel will, and I'll probably have you reach out to them. So I really look forward to uh, helping you guys buy a house, hopefully. Thanks. Go ahead, Liz. Thank you, Don. <laughs> um, first, I wanted to say thank you to Don and to Dr. Perman and to Karen and to Emily and to everyone we've worked with over the past seven months uh, to make this come to light. I'm the employer outreach manager for Live Baltimore, so I do a lot of different work with employers in the area. And we're really thankful when employers make commitments to their employees in this way. And this is a really, really big one. Uh, so. Like Dawn has mentioned, we've entered into this partnership and we will be on campus. Uh, my colleague Ross, unfortunately, is out right now, but he will be back next week and he will be here and you'll see him if you come to the trolley tour. He will be the person that will be doing the one-on-one -on -one appointments in these group sessions that you'll be able to sign up for. And then the trolley tour that Dawn mentioned, like she said, it will be here. Uh, and so you already know where that is. We'll be able to have sort of um, three parts to that. You'll be able to re meet real estate professionals if you don't have someone already. You'll be able to take workshops and then you'll be able to go on this tour and you'll have to complete all three of those if you move to get the incentive that's available afterwards. You don't have to be ready. We do have more of these incentive events throughout the year, but it's a good way to get started and it's here and it's free for you. And so at the table after this panel, we'll be able to sign you up for that. So if you know you're already available, that's great. If you're not, you can take a flyer and then there'll have be directions for you to sign up online afterwards. And then direction on how to sign up for those one-on-one -on -one sessions and those group sessions as well. Uh, we also have a plethora of information on our website and some of our website is linked from the Maryland website. So if you guys aren't familiar with us, this might uh, ring a bell for some of you. We're those people. Um, so we've been around for 20 years now and that's how a lot of people get to know who we are. 
And so we do really love city life and we want you to live here and help you do that. And so we're really committed to those Southwest neighborhoods uh, through our partnerships with uh, places like the Southwest Partnership where Michael will talk about what they do. And so we just really wanna help you find your home here in Southwest Baltimore. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Michael Seip and I work for the Southwest Partnership. Uh, the Southwest Partnership is a partnership of the seven neighborhoods, which are on the boards over there, and the six anchor institutions, which are within those um, neighborhoods, and that's um, University of Maryland Baltimore, University of Maryland Medical System, uh, Bon Secours Hospital, b &O Museum, one of our treasures in the neighborhood. Um, if you um, have young people, in your household and you're looking to buy a house and they love trains, you <laughs> buy a house on McHenry Street and you wake up every morning with a Tom Thumb in your front yard. I mean, what can be better than that? Um, so the partnership has come together to uh, the seven neighborhoods and the six anchor institutions really to work on very specific projects throughout the neighborhoods to make our neighborhoods even better than they already are. Um, our seven neighborhoods are great neighborhoods. You know, we start at Pigtown on the south, and if you haven't been to the Pigtown Festival and seen the running of the pigs, you gotta go down and see it. I mean, it's, it brings back a little bit of our history in the city. You go to Union Square and you have Millionaire Row. You have a group of 19th century houses where the developer of those houses would only sell to people who were worth a million dollars or more back in the 19th century. There's gorgeous houses. You have Holland's Market, um, one of the, the last remaining um, original market building on Holland's and Carrollton that's about to go through extensive renovation in the next year uh, and bringing lots of new exciting vendors uh, to the neighborhood. And then we have Franklin Square and Poppleton to the north um, and Barry Circle tucked into a little corner between Holland's and um, Pigtown. All those neighborhoods are incredibly diverse, um, both in terms of the physical housing stock as well as the demographics, um, from renters to homeowners, from mansions to old Irish worker housing, um, where the railroad imported Irish immigrants to come over and build uh, the first railroad in the United States. Um, and if you haven't been to the Irish Workers Museum on Lemon Street, it's a, no, right um, down on Poppleton and Lemon. It's a, it's a great little museum that talks about our his, some of our history. Um, but the partnership is committed to making those significant changes. And just an example, we are in the process now of buying an old theater, one of the largest uh, movie theaters built in a neighborhood in the city of Baltimore, the old Lord Baltimore. And that theater will probably in two years become a major cultural arts education live performance center on West Baltimore Street. Um, and the front of the theater will be rebuilt as it was in 1922 when the theater was originally built. So you have a little bit of history and then you walk through the door and you're into the modern era of social media and technology and all that stuff that I have no idea what it really is. But uh, my kids say it's exciting and my grandkids say it's even more exciting. So what the partnership is really focused on in terms of live near your work is, as Dawn said, on March, tentatively on March 24th in the biopark at 801 West Baltimore Street building, we are gonna bring together all the developers who are currently renovating houses we're going to bring together realtors, brokers, and you will be able to walk through the door and basically be in the Macy's of house shopping. Um, you'll be able to see between 50 and 70 houses, um, some already completed, ready to move into, some of them um, shells that the developer is just now beginning to, to build. And you'll be able to, to meet the developer, the contractor, the realtor, the broker, in that whole process. Um, and I encourage you in particular, and we have a ton of them, when you, when you think, if you're thinking about moving into the neighborhood, really try and concentrate on finding a realtor who lives in the neighborhood because they, 
Baltimore City is a city of neighborhoods, but in reality, it's a city of blocks. You go from block to block to block, and, and life is different in each block, um, which makes it an incredibly exciting uh, place to live. Uh, realtors who live in the neighborhoods know sort of what the difference is on each of the blocks. And at our housing fair, you'll have an opportunity to meet. Um, I think right now we have over 14 realtors signed up to be there, all of whom um, live in the communities. Um, so we look forward to seeing everybody on March 24th. If the date does change, it will have it flashing on your website. <laughs> Um, and I'll be there. Actually, I'll be on their uh, trolley tour on the 27th, so um, I can regale you with uh, minutia of historic detail throughout the neighborhoods. Thank you. My name is Matthew Gregory, and I'm with Go Northwest. I don't have as much to say as Michael does. Can you hear him in the back? But, um, oh, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Okay. I'm with Go Northwest. Uh, I will be putting on the uh, workshops. The first one is on the 20th, and mm -hmm. the next one is in the beginning of February. I will also do the one-on-one -on -one counseling after the workshops. Um, we can sign you up for the one-on-one -on -one counseling at the workshops. Uh, after that, you will get your certificate and uh, use the certificate to purchase your next home, uh, even in Pigtown. <laughs> All right. Uh, but uh, that's it. I will be out in the hall with some more information. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, ask me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bill, and I work in the Office of Community Engagement. I also live in Union Square. Um, I just bought my house in November 2016, but I also lived in Holland's Market right next door to campus um, since 2011. So I've been in the area for a long time, and I highly recommend it. Um, there are like practical considerations that I think applies to just about anywhere living close to campus that your commute is minimized, if not eliminated. Um, I can be home in like 10 minutes walking, or if I drive and I'm running late, about three or four minutes. <laughs> and... Um, and also, I don't have to pay to park on campus, which, as you all know, is about $100 a month or more, depending on your garage. Um, I also pay much less in housing now that I pay a mortgage as opposed to rent, because rent, on average, is much more expensive, and it, it was in practice for me. So now I pay less in housing. I pay almost nothing in parking, because um, I rarely drive. I drive much less anyway. Um, but then also there's something special about living on this side of MLK near campus. Because um, you don't just live close, but you live in like a real community where like your neighbors actually know your name and you know their name. Um, like little things, like you come out when it snows and someone else has shoveled your stoop and in front of your house. Because um, they knew you'd have a hard time doing that in the morning because you're slow getting ready. <laughs> um, and like all those little things about like knowing the people who own the businesses on your way to and from work and you stop in and say hello, you end up having dinner and meeting someone new and now that's someone you see on your way to and from work when they're also commuting. Um, it's those types of things that, um, and also you get that time back where usually you spend, some people spend 30 minutes or even over an hour driving each way to and from work and those are minutes that you don't spend with your partner or your children if you have a family and that kind of thing. So now you get that time back um, and spend it how you want, which is really important for me, the work-life balance part. Um, and so I guess that's like, you know, in two minutes or less, <laughs> the, the things that I would highlight about why I really love living here, and I highly recommend it. So now it's your turn. Any questions that you all want to ask? <clears throat> Uh, yes. So I've been through the um, home counseling process before, um, and I didn't purchase a house that time. But my question is, when I went through that counseling, it took about four to six weeks after the session to get my one-on-one. Um, what is the turnaround with Go Nova Fest? Good question. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, it will not take four weeks. It has been suggested... Uh, strongly to us that uh, we do it as quickly as possible. Uh, a week, two weeks, 
something like that is not unreal. There is advantage to having special relationships. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has a question? I actually have two. One for the trolley tour. You said it's free for UMB employees. What about spouses if they're not employees? So that's a good question. We can take care of that for you. So just come to us and look because every single person that attends the event does have to have a registration. So that's a really good question. Um, so we'll give you instruction at the table. And when you do register, you'll need a coupon code and you'll register with your UMB email address. So that's okay. how we'll check against the code. So if the code gets out there far and wide, we'll know that somebody with just a regular Hotmail address isn't necessarily a UMB employee. So just make sure when you register, you get that code and you use your UMB email address. And so for your wife, you can just, you can register for two people and we'll be able to figure yeah. that out. My other question <clears throat> on your slides, on your checklist, there was one on there about you had to be under contract on a home. Was that under contract before you even know if you're getting the incentive? For us, <clears throat> okay. So the question was, on one of the slides we, we had, you had to be under contract. And the question was, is that true even before you know you're going to get the incentive? So for us, our UMD incentive, as long as you know you are a full-time employee, you can check that out with Emily, but people generally know they're a full-time employee. You generally know your credit worthiness. You generally know if you've got the $1,000, um, you know you're going to get the incentive from us. Um, you can check in to see. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, so you can be a half time employee also. Um, you can check in with us to make sure that we still have funds available if that impacts any of your decision making. But this is our first year doing it at this level, and so we're not sure if the volume or activity is going to increase and at what pace we're going to have people applying. But you know you will be eligible for our, our um, incentive. It's the other incentives. So and I, with Little Baltimore, they have timelines that you have to do things relative to the trolley tour, et cetera, et cetera, to be eligible for a drawing. But yes, and, and the important thing, so important, do not get under contract before you have completed your housing counseling. If you don't, if you cannot place an order before you have your contract, you just cannot, because then you just nullified your eligibility for things. You cannot place a contract and have an agreement to purchase a home before you have gone through your counseling. And that applies for all of the incentives. Right. So I actually used our live near your work incentive before we quadrupled it. <laughs> Um, just last year, but I, so I went through all the steps and did Beth with the city. My husband was handing our paperwork to her to make sure we had all of our ducks in a row. We love you so much. Then we got the, you, the trolley tour. We won the lottery and it truly felt like we won the lottery. Um, so we stacked the trolley tour was fine. My husband's a city employee, so we were able to get five thousand through his job, and then the five thousand through um, UMB. And so it's really important just to make sure your realtor, which is what Michael is saying, knows about all the other incentives that you would qualify for, because there truly are a lot of things out there that, if stacked right, and if you really have your ducks in a row, you can leverage this money with a lot other things and that's that's really important but I can't say enough about you know the help that Debeck was at the city for making us feel organized and prepared and Liz I think I checked in with Liz at Live Baltimore and Ross about 65,000 times <laughs> to make sure I was on time that every signature I needed to get I had gotten and that's just really really important to everyone the one thing Liz said to me if you have a house in mind and you think that you're close to making an offer, just please, whatever you do, get the home ownership counseling finished because that is not going to hold you up in terms of when you're ready to make that offer because you don't know when you're going to fall in love with your dream home and you don't want that to be what got in your way. Any more questions? 
Hold, can we ask, can we get somebody who hasn't asked a question first and then we'll come back? Thank you. She's going to bring the mic to you so everybody can hear it. Uh, uh, <laughs> she, took it, she took it back there. You can be next. Oh, yes. My question is about my credit eligibility. I mean, if you don't have good credit, I mean, how can you qualify for the program? I did, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of your question. So one of the things that we're doing through HR Benefits, do you want yeah, to talk I to it, Emily? Yeah, walk in after, but um, our yeah, Launch Your Life program offers yeah. financial wellness um, lunch and learns here on campus, and you can sign up through them, through the website. Um, and we're focusing on financial wellness primarily because of this joint effort with this awesome benefit. We want to make sure you do look at all these things before you, you know, you are in good shape um, to have good credit. So I can talk to you offline as well about what we offer with that. And then, you know, with the various partners we have here um, up on this panel, they can also help too, which will get you in a good place. If you're credit can be repaired. Yes. Credit can be repaired, and that's a big part of what Go Northwest will do, and they can give you tips in terms of how to repair your credit. Did that answer your question? Okay. Um, I was just curious if the slides from today will be available on the website, um, like, just because the, the, the checklist seems to be pretty cohesive. Okay. And I've watch my parents go through something like this, and I have no idea how this goes, so having a list is really helpful okay. for me. I'm, I'm that type of person. And then, um, Can you I put guess, the mic closer? Oh, sorry. Uh, and, sir, like, sitting on Michael's right, I don't remember your name, I apologize. Matthew? Matthew? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Matthew, you mentioned the event in the biopark on March 24th. That was Michael. Uh, that was, it was Michael. Okay. I have the names swapped. I should know this. It's my brother's name. Um, what was the name of that event? So if I want to give it a Google, I can find it. Uh, the, the event? This, we're calling it the Southwest Partnership Housing Fair. Fair. All right. We'll advertise that event to all employees. You'll see the fact that that event's going to be happening. You'll see it in the Elm, the Elm Weekly. Um, you can check the boards around campus about it. And then you can always check with the Live um, Near Your Work website. All of the information that you could possibly want is on that website, or there's a link to it from that website. Another, um, there was a question one, up here, too. One, one other thing, just to follow up on that. If, if you want to go, the Southwest Partnerships website is swpbal.org. If you want to go on our website, you can sort of get a sense of what the volunteers in the community are working on, what projects are working on. Um, there's, a, there's just a lot of information on that website about the neighborhoods. Um, I just wanted to clarify what you were saying earlier. So with the first with the counseling, I know you can't put an offer in or contract in before you get your certificate. But with this program, can we have an offer in? while the application is being, like, what is the timeline for that? Because you said we just can't have a contract but not an offer. It focuses on the actual signed contract. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty sure this would be a Liz question. Yes, so we suggest before you finish counseling, and I don't know, you said you've been through it once, so if that was less than a year ago, then you, you still might be okay. So we can, like, look into that. But... Um, we suggest you sign no legal documents, no binding any things uh, before you go ahead and finish that counseling. So, I um, mean, the 20th, you know, is soon, and then you can work for that one-on-one -on -one if you still need it again. And then immediately after you finish that one-on-one, -on -one, you can go under contract if you want. I should mention and clarify that our one-on-one -on -one appointments, I just want to make sure this is clear, that we're offering through Live Baltimore here for free on campus are to help you understand the incentives, the process, the stacking, what's available. They're in addition to homeownership counseling. So nothing that we ever offer at Live Baltimore as far as classes make up for homeownership counseling or in place of that. They're additional things for it. But they are super helpful in the way that you can learn about the other incentives, how they stack, and then answer very specific questions. And then those group sessions that we'll have will be that sort of on a larger scale for everyone. It'll be the incentives class that we generally hold at our office, but we'll be holding it here exclusively for employees. So, but to answer your question, and this is what I 
what I said to Ashley. Ashley <laughs> and I used to work together a long time ago, was just don't sign anything. That's what we suggest um, until you complete both portions of homeownership counseling. So then that would mean an offer also. Because no. you would. Yeah, so you can apply for live near your work after you've put in the application on the house. So yeah, yes. to clarify that whole thing, you can have a contract in on the house, it can be ratified, then you can start this process. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you should be thinking about it all at the same time, right? You've probably contacted Emily, you've done a lot of poking around on the website, you've talked to your realtor about this, you've, your lender started to gather together the things that you're going to need on the checklist that we saw, which is in the Live Near Your Work application, which will be on the website, which will be in the slide that's uploaded. It'll be everywhere. It'll be, if you come to the trolley tour, we'll <laughs> give you a checklist um, of things you need for our incentive. It's the same. So you'll be gathering all that at the same time. You can apply for this incentive after you've signed the contract, but it's all happening around the same time. Hi. So I currently own a home already in Baltimore City. Would that be an advantage or a disadvantage for this program? Uh, I can answer that question as well. For this particular program, and now that UMB on their side has made it so that you can have already owned a home in Baltimore City, you do not have to be a first-time home buyer, nor is this program income restricted, which we haven't sort of, nobody's asked that question, but it is not. And many other incentives to stack on top are not. The requirement is that after you purchase this home, this home is your primary residence for five years. And it's that way for the other programs as well. So think about it that way. It's not an advantage or a disadvantage in terms of this incentive. Yeah, I have a simple question. So you say you needed to live in this home for five years. But for example, if after four years you live in that home, you retire or something. So then what do you do? So... Most city incentives are triggered upon um, resale or refinance of the home. So that'll be specifically for this particular incentive. UMB is going to be the one because the, the bulk of the funding is coming directly from the university. So they'll be recollecting those funds. Um, so they'll work with you on, you know, knowing when that might have happened and how much you owe back to them. So when you... When you go through the closing process, there's a document that you sign saying that if you leave the premise before that five-year period, you owe the university back funds. And part of what Emily will do annually is based on those people who have participated in the program, check to make sure that the property is still under their names and that it hasn't been sold. And did you say you retire? Like, what if you retire? If you retire, but you're... Okay. Retire and move or retire? Oh, retire and you're still staying. Oh, oh, no money. So that's one of the benefits. Because, again, if we go back to why we're doing this, it's community revitalization and stabilization. So while we expect you to live in the home for five years, you don't have to be a UMB employee for five years after you purchase the home. And that's important to know. Some people may um, be at retirement age. That it, different things may be going on in somebody's life. And um, so we decided, with Bill's urging, I will give you credit for this, that we not tie it to employment in order to continue to have the benefit. Okay? There was somebody's hand up that was in the back for a while. <coughs> How long is this pro program going to be? Is it just a short term or is it how long of a term is it? So the program has been in existence for eight years. We are relaunching it at a different dollar amount. We are going to assess the success of this program, which we anticipate it will be wildly successful. And we anticipate doing another round of this. But we will look at what goes on this time, see if we need to tweak anything, if the target neighborhood should be different, et cetera. So, and it will be up to our employees, too, how quickly they go through the funds that we have available. There was another hand somewhere? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, my question is just, I guess, to clarify a previous question or topic about the homeownership counseling. Um, 
specifically what does it entail and how long in terms of time commitment are we talking about? The homeownership counseling. Matthew, I'm going to interrupt you because I need you to put it right in your lips so they can hear you. The, the homeownership counseling is two parts. The first part is the group workshop. Um, the second part is the one-on-one -on -one counseling. The group workshop starts in the morning, ends in the afternoon. Usually it takes six and a half, seven and a half hours, something like that. And then the one-on-one -on -one counseling. Uh, you can make an appointment at the uh, workshop, and the one-on-one -on -one counseling can take two hours, two and a half hours, depending upon how many questions, of course, you have. The group workshop will cover general information, of course. The one-on-one -on -one counseling will talk more specifically about you, uh, gathering your pay stubs and bank statements and tax returns and things like that. Uh, and to clarify again, do not have a signed contract before you have the counseling. Not a lot of words, just don't do it. <laughs> so we have about 10 more minutes, so let's take another question. Um, would you qualify if you're in bankruptcy? My guess, go ahead. So, so the question was, would you qualify if you were in bankruptcy? I think, uh, you know, what we say, and, and I think Dave Beth would echo this, uh, for, for city incentives, you have to sort of be mortgage ready, right? So you have to qualify from a, from a, for a mortgage from a mortgage provider, right? So that person decides those kinds of things. But generally, if you're in bankruptcy, I would assume the, question, the answer is no. Um, so no for now? No for now, right. But and so like you we said, your credit. But how about, how about if it was five years ago? Yeah, that is like a possibility. Yeah. Again, you would need to talk with... Um, with the lender. We have probably time for two more questions. I was, I was going to answer a question. So for most lenders, um, you have to be two years removed from the release of your bankruptcy. So she said that what she's learned is that you have to be two years released from your bankruptcy uh, to be able to you know, start qualifying. Yeah. And then like I, again, the workshops that we have on campus focus, we're focusing on credit and rebuilding that and getting yourself in a better financial place to be able to buy. So you really you should get there. So those people who have questions on credit really should sign up to attend the cl other classes. Yeah. Tell me the name again. Through Launch Your Life, which is found on the HR website. Um, and we also send things out through the ELM as well. So you, it, just click on those to register. Yes, okay. you got okay. it. Yes. Right. Yes, and you can see me after. We have a table outside for lunch. Okay, so a question here and then that question. Did you have a question? Okay, so we got two more questions and then we're going to close. Mine isn't really a question, it's just a request. Could you put up the slide on things to do before application? I think I can. I think I can. There you go. Mm -hmm. All that information is also on the website, and it's outlined in a little bit more detail. Mm -hmm. Our last question. Uh, so I'm curious, with the brand new tax plan, what's going to probably change uh, in the wake of homeownership, and if some of, if anything will be covered in the Go Northwest workshop as far as deductibility or <laughs> anything that'll change as far as like projecting what will happen for home ownership and uh, taxes, Baltimore City taxes are kind of high um, compared to uh, some other places I've looked at, so at least compared to the county. So I just was kind of curious, you know, as far as that goes if, if you have any info on that or will. Well, I can't answer the tax code implication question. I can say, though, and I should say that on our website and in our sessions and things, we can talk to you about property tax credits that are available, some that are underutilized, some that might qualify on some houses that you're looking at. We're in historic districts in these neighborhoods. Um, there's income-based tax credits that people don't necessarily know about. When you get in your home, we need to make sure you're signing up for homeowner's tax credit. 
So the, so the property tax piece of it, we at Live Baltimore can talk about sort of more in depth, and that's often an after you get into a house kind of a thing. Um, the, the actual taxes um, that I don't know if you know more information on that, but that I don't. I think you have to be a financial planner or <laughs> an accountant to do that. I hope to know because I own a home, so I'm going to need to figure that out too. <laughs> yeah. If you come in and you have a mortgage of like 250000 so anything, 2.5 million, anything else, you can still get. Yeah. Right. So we're going to have to bring our questions to a close, but I would like everybody who's been working on this project for the past seven months, our core team, to come up front. Yes, I said, come up front, please. <laughs> Where's Matt? Where's Jackie? She's not here. Okay. Bill and I make really nice neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> These group of people have been the brains and the executors behind the scene to make this project come alive. And I thank them from the bottom of my heart because they have been an awesome group to work with. They are your colleagues. They care, and they care about the neighborhood that we live and are a part of. And we want to make sure that this is an absolutely awesome experience for you all. And so I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. So now is the opportunity for you to go outside, and the different groups are going to be at the tables. Go Northwest, Live Baltimore. Emily's going to have a table. You have an opportunity to talk to Ashley and Bill. So stay around, eat, ask questions. This is for you. Thank you for coming. Yeah.